Hey everybody, not so frog here. Uh, as you can see, I got a new setup for my camera or my phone, and it's basically just made out of a little microphone stand that I bought at the nearby dollar store or thrift store. And I just repurposed it to hold my phone. Works quite well, better than stacking in a bunch of pails like my older videos. <laughs> it looks pretty ghetto like that, but this way it's a lot better. I'm also going to speak up in these videos because I feel like it's hard to hear me with my phone's audio, kind of old crappy system. So I'll just speak up like this. Um, today I have built something I've always wanted to make. I just finished it today after a whole bunch of different versions of it and a lot of trial and error. This is a bullet shooting crossbow and it is one I've always wanted to build based on traditional designs. Uh, this whole setup is based on a medieval type that I've seen pictures of. I think it was Italian maybe. And basically they had a low uh, curve in the stock and that's to allow a string to fly free because there's no actual slot that you're pushing anything through because a straight string can't push a bullet, right? So. Uh, Instead of that, we have a double string with a pouch in the middle, which was used in uh, my airsoft bow that's in my other video from a while back. It works quite well. And in this case, it's not center shot, because it's a bit hard to do it that way. Uh, this bow is just cant. It's held rigidly in place, and it keeps that cant. And the cant allows the bullet to fly over the bow, and that way it flies free, instead of shooting through it, which it would break in this case. Uh, it uses a thumb trigger, which is kind of different. I've never done that before. I did it because it was easier to make and I didn't feel like drilling all the way through the stock because realistically I'm pretty lazy. And um, it allows for a very light release and because there's no like horizontal like gyration movement when you're pulling a hard trigger like with a finger trigger, this one you're just pushing down. So all the force is going down so you're not twisting and moving that. It doesn't really affect accuracy at all. It does kind of obscure the sights a bit but if you do it right you can dodge that. Uh, the bow itself is just made from some cheap pine. It's uh, got adjustable rear sight, which is good because of the bow shooting a bit high. And then it's just got a non-adjustable foresight. The bow itself is made out of sweet saw steel, which is used in a lot of my crossbows. Uh, the stirrup is made from bent rod and it's bolted in place. Um, the actual pine like stock isn't that strong because pine's crap. I, I just use it because it was what I had. And the actual bulk of it is these polycarbonate or plexiglass side plates, and they hold the bow rigidly in place and the 60 pound bow is no problem for them. So I'll bring the camera up close and give you some close details and then I will cock the bow and show you how that works. So the stirrup is, like I said, made from bent rod. It has a bit of hockey tape on here just to give it a, a little grip on it. And it's just bolted in place. Uh, the bolt itself is spaced out to allow this to like not compress in on itself. The plexiglass is really strong and not flexible this way, but going like this way, it's very flexible because it's flat that way. So this just kind of provides it to be very rigid and strong. Uh, this is just bolted on here. This is the foresight made from some bent kind of skewer for a barbecue or something. I've used a lot of that in uh, my other crossbows for certain pieces. Uh, the bow itself, you can see, is made from stacked. It, it's stacked this way and it is uh, flat throughout. It's non-tapered, but it's tapered in thickness technically because it's stacked together. And there are four strips of sweet saw steel from a sweet saw that I had. I used it in a lot of my other crossbows. Uh, the string itself was fun to make. It was my first actual, like, amateur crossbow string. I made it completely myself out of some knockoff spider wire, and I just wound 20 strands of that. There are little pegs that I turned on a makeshift lathe from a drill. These are to keep the string spaced out. The pouch itself is made from hockey tape, and this back here is made from some uh, thicker, even more knockoff spider wire which is then wrapped with the lesser spider wire. Same with the end loops. The end loops also have uh, leather and electrical tape in place to keep the string from getting cut up. You can kind of see the leather sticking out the end there and the electrical tape. And the adjustable rear sight is just a piece from some kind of door hinge or something. I don't know, it talks about a door on there and some text. I don't really know what it's for. But uh, inside the slot, that's why I, I used it. It also keeps the trigger like this, but inside the slot, you can adjust that the wrench and you can move it up and down for different elevations. I have it on the lowest, which is what I want right now because the bow shoots very high. There is a safety, a very primitive one, and you simply just push it in like this. Well, it's easier when it's cocked, but yeah. When it's cocked, you push it in like that because it aligns with it and it's just held in place with a rubber band just in case you pull it out too far and it falls out. It'll spring back. Uh, the stock in the back had a split going through it, so I just lashed that with paracord. It's kind of more cosmetic than anything. I just wanted to give it a little flare. It was kind of bland throughout. But, yeah, that's the whole bow. I guess I'll show you how to cock it now. So it's about the same as any other crossbow. 
Put your foot in the stirrup, two fingers on each side of the string, pull back. But when you get to about right here, you're going to want to flip up that trigger, slip it underneath, and then release the trigger. Let it sit against, and then release the string. Now you're just going to take your safety. There you go. Solid. As you can see, it's under quite a lot of tension, but the bow remains canted thanks to these strong plexiglass side plates. And you can see that obviously the whole string, it's definitely going to fly free of the bow. You can kind of see that when you put it like that. So yeah, it's cocked. I guess we'll do some shooting then. So I'm allowing myself a pretty large target, and that's because I'm kind of new to the weapon. It shoots kind of vertically inaccurate and shooting very, very high. So I'm trying to get that under control. I'm sure I'll be a lot more accurate with it when time comes, but you know, for now I'm just using a large target. So I'm just shooting a 68 caliber marble. Let's take a shot from about a good distance with the steel ball at the box, see what happens. So yeah, in conclusion, it shoots very well for what it's worth. I mean, I'm no marksman or anything, I still have a lot to work on that. And, I mean, I just made this, like I pretty much just finished today. So, pretty much out of the box if you want to call it, it shoots very, very well. Um, it's like horizontally, I don't think there's any differentiations in, in like accuracy at all. It's just the vertical accuracy from it shooting up is a bit hard to handle. But I adjusted the sights and dialed them in and it seems to be shooting just like okay. So I, I'm all right with it. It's about as powerful as, yeah, your average store-bought slingshot. So yeah, um, there's definitely more powerful versions of this to come in the future. This is definitely not the most powerful crossbow I've made. There's going to be a lot more from this, like where this came from. So stay tuned for that, subscribe if you want to see that. Uh, if you have something to ask about this crossbow, be sure to ask away in the comments. If there's something you want to see added to it, comment that, I'll put it on the next one. And yeah, I guess that's it for today then. I really hope you like this video. I know I love this crossbow and I'd love to make a video about it. It's really fun and easy with this new microphone, our microphone stand that I use now. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.